Greetings folks and welcome back to the landscape. My last video I talked about my re-engagement with film photography and don't worry <laughs> it hasn't worn off that quick. But one of the aspects of photography generally that I've struggled with, certainly with digital, is black and white. I've struggled even in software even with some of the tools that we've got these days struggled to make my black and white images look black and white and in fact a while ago this is going back some time now maybe 10 years or so i decided to put myself through a royal photographic society um, distinction and i joined a group that was working towards various distinctions and we had um, you know, somebody learned who was there to advise us. And when I sent through my initial draft panel, one of his comments was that my black and white images weren't black and white. And I've got to be honest with you, I actually took that quite badly because when I looked at them, I could see black and I could see white. So I didn't really understand um, why the comment was made. Now, the upshot was, for a completely different reason, I decided not to go ahead uh, with that um, distinction. But it's something that's rolled around in my head, and it is definitely something that I've struggled with. So shooting film black and white actually gives me a bit of an opportunity to experiment, to compare what I'm getting digitally with what a film can reproduce. So in the B-roll there, I've just set my Sigma up, uh, framed a scene, put a grad on, put a uh, polarizer on, and uh, I, I've created a, an image, but then I changed the color mode to black and white just to see what it would look like in black and white. And it looks really quite in black and white, which I quite like. And that's kind of what got me thinking about doing this video because I've got my film camera with me. So that gives me the opportunity to shoot exactly the same scene, more or less, with black and white film. And then I can do a comparison between the two, which would be quite interesting, won't it? So that previous scene, uh, around about 50 millimeters in landscape orientation, I've put a polarizer on uh, just to take some of the glare off the water and I've got a grey grad just to hold back some interest in the sky. So what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to leave the tripod exactly as it is and I'm going to try and do exactly the same thing with my film camera. So for those of you who are interested in such things, <laughs> for those of you who aren't, you may as well fast forward through this bit. So I need the polarizer. Take it off, put you there. Let's just get the filter ring that I need, which is that one. Is it that one? No, I need the 72. Where's the 72 gone? There it is. Oh, and that reminds me actually, I've got a red filter. What I ought to do is take an image without and an image with. Why have I got a red filter? It is an interesting question. I read that for black and white film photography, I can't get the blasted thing off. There we go. For black and white film photography, if you use a red filter, it increases the contrast. So your black and white images look more gritty and more, which is exactly what we've got here. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot a frame without it and a frame with it. So, as you can see, I have an L bracket for my film camera so that I can do that. I don't need to worry about levels and all of that nonsense because I know the tripod is level. Now, unfortunately, my sight fails me, so I'm going to have to look through the viewfinder with my specs on, and I'm just going to spin the polarizer yeah, about like that. And then I'm going to put exactly the same grad. Because what I'm trying to do is keep it as, as identical as I can to that, so that I can compare the two results. Right, so let's just check focus. Oh no, that's zoom, where's focus? There's focus. And then we'll position the grad. There we go. It's a nice enough scene. Right, where's my cable release? because I don't want to touch the camera itself. Right. Switch the meter on. And the meter is saying I am grossly underexposed. So I am at F11. 15th of a second is still slightly underexposed. Eighth of a second, potentially overexposed so excuse me I think we're going to have to do two so we are frame number eight on this film at f11 15th of a second the needle is still saying there is risk of underexposure And frame nine, we'll do, um, which way did I go? Ah, oh, that's better. Uh, now we're at F11 at eighth of a second, frame number nine. Now the needle is actually slightly higher. There we go. Now I'm going to do exactly the same process, but with a red filter. Because what I'm curious to know is, does the red filter actually really make any difference in black and white film photography? Because do you know what? If the answer is yes, Why can't I use that in my digital photography, in software? Just turn black and white the red channel. What do you think? Am I talking complete nonsense? <laughs> Won't be the first time. Right, so let's just put everything back together. Like so. Right, first thing I'm going to do is recheck focus, which through red filter is a bit challenging, but there we go. And I can straighten up the filter. I'm going to just do polarization, which I can just about see. Right, okay, where is the needle now? Holy crap, I can't see the needle. I can't see the needle at all. Hmm. That scuppers that plan. <laughs> so in the viewfinder of, of this camera is a light meter. And it's literally just a needle that swings up and down 
to tell me how my exposure is doing. But because it's in a dark portion of the frame, I can't see it. So I think what I'm going to have to do is raise the camera up. Right, so that's, I've raised the camera up so that these rocks down the bottom aren't in the frame and I'm underexposed. So if I change it so that I'm slightly overexposed and then drop the camera back down again. Should be pretty close, shouldn't I? Well, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? Right. So we are frame number 10. We are one fourth of a second at F11 with a polarizer, with a gray grad and a red filter. Lovely sound. Right. So all I need to do now is get that processed, get that image off that camera and then do a side by side comparison. Now, with the red filter, I've got to admit, it's actually quite difficult to judge focus. And on this cam, <coughs> so, sorry, <coughs> on this lens, the focus ring is right on the front. So as soon as I try and put something on the front, the focus is being played with. Um, I don't quite know a way around that. But anyway, if the, the image with the red filter is slightly blurry, that will be why, because Trying to judge focus is actually really quite difficult. What I probably ought to do is get a red filter that will go in um, this filter holder because then I'm not having to muck around uh, with uh, um, focus at all. I can just drop it in and away I go. But maybe that's a little bit of a lesson learned from using this camera out in the landscape. So let's put some images on the screen and then we'll have a quick chat about what worked and what didn't and why. See you in a minute. OK, so a quick uh, voiceover of these uh, three images, uh, all clearly labelled. Um, out of the three, I'd say probably the one in the middle is the one that actually appeals to be more, principally because it's got more detail in the water, whereas the out of digital camera JPEG uh, that's very, uh, you know, there's hardly anything going on in the water, which I'm quite surprised about, actually, because um, I was using a polarizer um, and I would have expected uh, the polarizer to cut out more of the glare. Maybe at the time I didn't uh, actually spin it quite enough. So I think my uh, aim here would be to try and replicate the detail in the image in the middle, but with the same level of contrast as the image on the far left. I think the image on the far left probably fits that description of there's black and there's white, whereas the one in the middle is more, I guess, shades of grey. The one on the far right, I don't know whether it's just a bad scan or not, but um, it looks very uh, almost washed out. Uh, I don't quite know what's going on there. Maybe the red filter didn't quite work as I had intended. But um, I think that's one maybe to scan on my own scanner and see whether I get uh, a similar result. Although there is a lot more detail up in the sky, which I actually find quite appealing. So I hope you found that comparison interesting and useful. If I learned any lessons, then I'll have uh, narrated them. But... I think at the end of the day, any kind of experience like this, it's an opportunity to learn and it's an opportunity to develop. I'm still learning how to use a film camera full stop. But if using a film camera helps to make me a better photographer as opposed to a um, magician in, uh, in software, then great. So much be it. And, and I think that's so much the better. But if it also gives me the opportunity to understand how I can process digital files so that 
black and white for me, at least, is a little bit more pleasing, then again, that's a bonus. So that's it for this video. Uh, if you like landscape photography, um, please consider becoming a subscriber uh, to my channel. There's, that's all I talk about on this channel is landscape photography and uh, cameras. If you like the content, please do give it a thumbs up. That does uh, help the content immeasurably. And until we're back out in the landscape again, take care, stay well and stay safe. Bye for now.